Namaste and hello everyone. Today I am going to cover the topic of microtia. In the first video I will cover a little bit of the theory and in the subsequent one I will demonstrate on how to make the template which is commonly asked in the exams. The uh, reference book for this topic is from Nilligan. So microtia is considered to be quite common, 1 in 6000. It is associated uh, quite often with certain syndromes like treacher collins syndromes, craniofacial microsomia and can also be associated with a wide spectrum as seen in Bacterial. So the classification of congenital ear is also important which has been described by Tanzer. So in the first group we have a complete absence of the ear that is anosia. In the second group is microtia where it can be present with or without atresia of the external auditory canal. Under the third group falls hypoplasia of the middle one third of the auricle. The fourth group consists of hypoplasia of the superior one third of the auricle, which is further subclassified as 4A, B and C. A being a constricted or cup ear or lop ear. B being cryptosia, which is hidden ear, where the superior one third of the auricle stays embedded under the scalp and in 4c we have an entire absence of the superior one third of the ear and number five is the prominent ear which is also an important topic where ear is concerned now if we come down to microtia there is further a classification that has been given by professor nagata where there are four subtypes of microtia the commonest one being the lobular type of microtia where a sausage shaped remnant is usually found then there is a concha type a small concha type where mainly there is a hypoplasia of the concha and there can be a complete absence of the ear that is the anosia so there are a few important points that are asked where microtia is concerned like what is the age of surgery so the general consensus is that the child is operated at seven to eight years of age why? Because around usually this age is where the child's ear, which is if the contralateral ear is also present, assumes almost 90% of its adult size. So for us to recreate the uh, ear which is missing, we have a good template. And we don't usually wait for an adult age to operate because if we are trying to take the uh, costal cartilage framework, calcification starts to occur in the cartilages. Now, uh, what happens in case of uh, bilateral microtia and if there is atresia of the external auditory canal? So if both the ears are missing, where would you take the template from? So in this cases, you have to uh, take another child of the same age, gender and height and that child's ear can be considered as the template. And if there is an atresia of the external auditory canal, usually in the unilateral cases, their uh, reconstruction is not attempted because the hearing of the child is still present. However, in bilateral cases, along with the ENT surgeons, the external auditory canal can be attempted to be reconstructed. However, first we should go for the microtia reconstruction so that we have a virgin and non-scarred area for the ear and then the ESE can be made. However, bone anchoring aids are the ones which is Baha that can be put which is easier and uh, less complicated and helps in the hearing of the child. Now what about the hairline? A lot of times you will hear that there is a low hairline which can interfere with the uh, new ear that we want to form. So in these cases the hairline has to be lasered off. So you can usually start the child on laser sessions so that the hairline from that part where we want to make the ear is uh, removed or in the olden times there used to be a scalp roll technique where the area from that scalp used to be rolled up and then the ear reconstructed and then that roll used to be put back into place that is there of historical interest as well now the options that we have for ear reconstruction are the most common widely used autologous costochondral cartilage that is framework reconstruction then we know we have med pore implants like polymethyl metacrylate and then there are osteo integrated implants so now i will explain further about the stages of microtia now the um, 
Microsia has been described very well by Professor Bert Bren from the US and uh, he describes as Microsia being constructed in four stages. Usually these are three months apart and like I said we begin at the age of seven to eight and so usually by completing all these stages one year of the uh, duration is required. So in the first stage there is the auricular framework insertion. In the second stage, there is a lobule rotation if there is an existing lobule. Third is elevation of the entire framework. And then fourth is the tragus and the conca reconstruction. Now, Professor Nagata from Japan has described that we can do all these in two stages. So in his first stage, he usually combines the first, second and fourth stages which have been described by Dr. Brent. So in the first stage itself, he will do the auricular framework insertion, lobule rotation and creation of the tragus and concha. And then in the second stage, he will do the elevation of framework alone. And that is supported by an extra cartilage which has been harvested and the chest is reopened which is considered a drawback. And then there is a use of a temporoparietal facial flap to cover that and it is resurfaced with a full thickness skin graft. So a little comparative analysis of the stages described by both these uh, stallworthies where microtia is concerned. So Professor Brent describes four stages by Nagata there are two. Seven to eight years is considered to be the age for the four stage reconstruction. However, Professor Nagata says by 10 to 12 years because there is more amount of cartilage that we require and that can be more demanding on the uh, child. So Professor Brent uses the six seven sin chondrosis for his uh, base reconstruction and he takes the eighth floating rib for the helical rim. However, Professor Nagata takes six, seven and eight and he also takes the number nine rib where it's used for the anti-helix reconstruction. So the advantage of this procedure is that you have more projection. Now where cartilage framework is concerned, usually the extra perichondrial dissection wherein you leave the perichondrium behind is considered to be the way of harvest. That is because if you leave the perichondrium behind and sometimes you can even put back small pieces of the extra cartilage. So this helps to decrease the deformity that is found at the donor site. And by this, the subsequent rib also grows. Yes, I have uh, heard in a lot of webinars and seminars that people have harvested that same rib at least, I don't know, three, four times because the perichondrium, perichondrium helps to grow back the rib in that position. In this, you have to also remember that uh, there can be a pleural breach. So in that case, what you have to do is um, you have to obviously repair it by inserting an ICD and you start repairing the layers. And as soon as you have made like a purse string closure, as you pull out the ICD, the anesthetist has to give a positive pressure ventilation, which helps to close that breach and you repair the pleura. These are all important viva questions. That's why I'm going through them. Uh, Post-operatively, it's very, very important to keep a suction drain. Now, the importance here is not just to prevent the hematoma, which would obviously spoil the framework, but to help maintain the convolutions of the ear, the reconstructed ear, by the suction device. So, this is usually kept at least for a period of five days. All this is very well described in Nilligan, and you can easily find all this uh, theory over there. Now, a lot of people also ask where would you take the cartilage from, the right side or the left side? So as a rule, a lot of people take it only from the right side because obviously the left side you're going to uh, be close to the pericardium. And when you take it, usually they say that the contralateral side is preferred. But if you are reconstructing the, suppose the left ear from the right side cartilage, you can just flip it over and you can have the proper orientation. So finally, then the incision which will be present will depend on the remnant that you have. So in the lobular type or in the sausage shaped variety, you usually have an S shaped incision that is made and you usually do not discard any of the extra skin that you have during your first stage and you save it for the subsequent stages. So this was the discussion about the theory and in my next video, I will demonstrate on how to make the template for microtia.